You never forget when you get told. I got a text message saying, I'm HIV positive and now so are you. And that's when you go, oh, no, 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 I'm not. I thought, well, if I don't, if I don't know, then I'll be fine. I, was, I thought, like many still do, that if you have HIV, then that's it. Every story has a beginning, middle and end. The father I had wasn't the father I deserved. He, he was an alcoholic. He was one of the most charming people you'll ever meet, which is quite often the case with someone who's a domestic abuser. When you are in a domestic abuse environment, you never know what's going to happen. Some of the stories I can tell you are just horrendous. Like scenes from a, a slasher movie. There was a knock at the door and there were like seven policemen all over six foot with our social worker comes to the kids. That moment is still... Sorry. Still one of the happiest days of my life. I, that was the last time I ever spoke to him. He was like, I hope you're happy. And I was like, yeah, of course I am. You did this. I was seeing a guy um, when I was living in North London. We were kind of dating for quite a while, or it seemed like a while. Seems like a lifetime ago now. That broke down. Things got a bit weird. I didn't hear from him for quite some time. And then I got a random text out of nowhere. And then uh, a friend of mine also had a scare. And he, he, um, we both went at similar times. He got the all clear. Yeah, you know, so I went got tested and it took a lot longer than it normally did and uh, the health advisor said I'm afraid it's gonna be positive and then I just, just broke down like as most people do yeah I thought damn it I've ruined I've ruined my life for the, because of this <laughs> All the boys saying, couldn't kiss someone with HIV for too long. I wasn't even too sure back then. I just kept my mouth shut. It was like it getting stuck in your throat. Because it's almost like if you say it out loud, then that means it's real. I remember walking back through Victoria and I was like crying like a crazy person in the street. And I just kind of made myself forget about it. And that was the only way that I could really deal with it. They say that you're the sum of your experiences, but it seems that I'm seen by just one. Met this guy, we were chatting for a while, really hot, and then we were in bed one day and he'd mentioned that this guy had spoken to him and had told him that I was HIV positive. And he was like, and then I got into this blazing row with him because I know you're not and you know, da da da. And I was lying in bed and I was like, how, how have we not had this discussion? I literally, I, I could feel the blood drain from my body. And he was like, you're not, are you? And I went, no. As soon as it came out of my mouth, I was like, what have you just done? You just lied to this person that you are falling for. And I knew at that moment, I was like, you have screwed everything up. No matter what happens now, you have screwed it. I was like, I can't start a life with this person on this lie. This is not possible. Even though we'd never had unsafe sex, I was on medication, so I was undetectable. I'd been creating uh, a routine for the show that I was doing at the Wonderground, and uh, it was about how I saw our relationship, uh, and, uh, and also me struggling to accept the fact that I was positive. Then... He came to see the show. Performing for him in the audience was the hardest thing I've ever done. To bear my soul on stage, it was me, as me, performing with this guy that I was picturing as him. I then get a message a few months later from him saying that someone had told him that I was positive and that I'd lied. And that, 
I, I, I begged for his forgiveness. I said we were never unsafe. I'd never put him at any risk. He was like, you've lied to me for all this time. You didn't give me the choice. I knew it was my fault. Had I been honest, I think it may have turned out differently. Had I had the courage to own who I am completely, maybe things would be different. Then we didn't speak for a very long time. And in that time, I came out to my family. Because I was like, I can't have this holding me down anymore. I can't have this burden of not. In London, I've been telling people for so long, and I've been helping people within my circle for so long, that it was almost, not pathetic, but just stupid that I wasn't open with the people I loved the most. Telling my sister was accidental. She had a cancer scare. She didn't think she could deal with it. And I said, you can't push it away, you need to know. She said, you, you don't know how it is to deal with something like this. And I said, well, actually, I do. I'm HIV positive and I have been for some time. And she didn't know how to take it. She was upset. And it, that wasn't me trying to take away her moment or it was just me trying to tell her, look, you can do I, I've done it for this long. You can do it. I had unloaded this on her and not given her the option to talk to someone else about it. So she told my stepdad and my, my sister. And again, they were really upset that I'd waited so long to tell them and that I'd dealt with it on my own for so long and that it explained why I was not home quite so much and why being away from the family was so easy at times for me. Because, you know, keeping a part of yourself away from the people you love makes you distant from them because you're not sharing that part of you that if, even though it doesn't define you it is part of your everyday life and you're not allowing them to see that so that was really difficult and then telling mum that took a little bit longer because mum's ill she got emphysema and um, I'd always use it as an excuse that you know she um She wouldn't be, uh... Sorry. I oh, always used the excuse that because she was ill, she wouldn't survive it. So I was protecting her. But, yeah, that wasn't the case. She was really upset. Again, because of the, um... Just a silly comment that she made off the cuff and she was really upset with herself because her eldest son had been dealing with this for so long on his own and having to be strong when that's she's like that's my job so she was really upset you need to disclose and you need to tell the people you love because they'll be they'll surprise you I was so worried about that would take people away from me is actually bringing people into my life for a change so Telling, telling my family was a massive turning point. To be able to finally be really open about everything about my life to them, and for them now to be really happy and proud of me for trying to help other people, is just a huge turning point. I don't stress about my health, at least not my health specifically to do with HIV. I first came to 5016 Street about nine, ten years ago. The staff here over the years have just been amazing. Once a year we check patients' bloods. The most important tests that we do are uh, HIV viral load. Um, the HIV viral load measures the amount of virus in somebody's blood. If someone's on treatment for HIV, this virus will be undetectable and this has two benefits. It means that the person will stay well. 
The second benefit of um, being on treatment and being undetectable is that HIV won't be passed on to anybody else. This is known as treatment as prevention or U equals U, undetectable equals untransmittable. So we know now that if somebody takes their HIV medications every day and they maintain an undetectable viral load in their blood, there is zero chance of them passing HIV on to a sexual partner. But now I have a strength that I never had before. I have an appreciation for life that I didn't have before. I have a sense of belonging that I didn't have before. I have a sisterhood. The campaign launch is going to be at Café de Paris. I'm really nervous. The campaign isn't just going to be about Café, that's just raising some money. I'm going to be uh, putting together a panel so we get to see a, a broader spectrum of what it means to be living with HIV. It is one thing to, to divulge your status or to talk about your status in a room full of people that are uh, expecting you to or you know, other HIV advocates, but I think putting it out to the mainstream and people outside of um, the community is something that I want to do. The aim of today and the aim of my campaign is to, is to break the second silence, new era of uh, complacency, stigma, um, lack of education or uh, lack of want to find the right uh, knowledge surrounding what it really means to be HIV positive. And I'm really, really excited to have organised this panel because we have Mark Santos, who is the director of Positive East. We have Beatrice Nabulia, who is the African Communities Prevention Coordinator. Uh, between the two of them, they've been working in the sexual health sector for over 50 years. So that's absolutely incredible to me. The frustration, the solid frustration comes in knowing that so many, too many, just don't know this. Don't know what living with HIV is for a woman in Britain today. I think it's taught me to be very resilient because one day I thought I was going to die and now 24 years down the line I'm still here. I was able to have, I'm a mother of four, but two of my children were born after my diagnosis and they're both HIV negative. Can I add my voice to those people that are coming out? Can I broaden people's minds? There's currently no cure for HIV so it's affecting more and more people every year. It's why I'm stepping forward and why I want people to know and to be visible that it doesn't have to be this massive thing. It's not going to end your life. We now have incredible advancements in medication. So, you know, just by stepping forward, hopefully that will allow us to change people's perception and to let somebody, just one person, living with HIV or a new diagnosis know that it's all right. I'm grateful for life and I'm grateful to live in a way that I never was before. It's knowing that I'm in the middle of my journey. It's knowing that I'm not just someone's friend, daughter, a health diagnosis, that I am someone. My campaign is about helping those with HIV and wanting to be someone or putting them in touch with someone that can be a good role model. Everything that I've gone through in my family life, to my romances, to my work, Everything's led me to this point. I hadn't realised how passionate I was about this, how much I needed this, until I started speaking about it. That knowledge that you're going to make, you're going to be able to help someone in the middle of some small town that doesn't really have access to sexual health services or is worried about something, or maybe have just got diagnosed and they just see your story on, say, Twitter or Instagram or Facebook and they're like, someone else out there is just like me. That's, that's amazing.